Alright, today I saw Spider-Man No Way Home, and boy, it was exactly the movie I was looking forward to. Now, of course, I gave a little bit of time to stew, but it still may be the recency bias, but I do gotta say, in terms of the MCU ranking, which is still this, but now it's, you know, with that on top, and yeah, it is probably the best non, like, big event of the, like, two Thanos movies, you know? It is the best solo film, and one, number three of the best MCU films. It was exactly what I was looking forward to. I don't think it's as good as, you know, Infinity War and Endgame, necessarily. Specifically because it, you know, it's not where everything ever was leading to. But it was still so much happening in that movie. So, of course, a bunch of spoilers going in, so if you haven't already seen it, just know I already absolutely recommend it. That being said, with everyone out of the way, uh, it is exactly what everyone was hoping it would be. Now, firstly, of course, I rewatched the three Tobey Maguire films and the two Andrew Garfield films with a little bit of, like, the other live-action Spider-Man for no reason. You know me. I gotta make everything complicated. But it was really cool going into the interesting history of Spider-Man. I vaguely talked about it in my Cyborg uh, movie film. Not, you know, DC Cyborg, but the John claude Van Damme Cyborg movie. But Canon Films bought the rights, and they were going to make a whole movie about Spider-Man being like a actual Spider-Man before Stanley was like, that's garbage, and wrote his own script, which kind of didn't really go nowhere, and eventually the whole legal trouble with canon happened, which is a whole other topic that maybe I can make a whole ass video of, and again, I kind of went into it in, in my Cyborg video, but ultimately the, one of the people in canon films held the rights for the longest time, ultimately making a deal that would be, unless he made the movie, it would revert uh, back to Marvel. And after uh, lots of legal trouble <laughs> with the uh, people behind uh, Terminator who were working specifically with James Cameron, who was going to make like this more edgy, sex-filled Spider-Man movie, um, and it never really happening. But eventually 1990 came, and the lawsuits of trying to get all the rights possible that Carl Claude tried ultimately completely failed, and by the point Marvel got all the rights, they sold it to uh, Columbia Pictures, owned of course by Sony, because they kind of had to due to certain restructurings that were happening thanks to the company Toy Biz, because Marvel was going out of business during the time. Uh, whole thing, which of course eventually led to Paramount owning them, making the Sam Raimi Spider-Man films before eventually one of the certain producers, who actually got a quick little shout-out in the credits of this most recent one, Avi Arad, um, kind of got in some problems and disagreements, eventually led to Sam Raimi leaving, them canceling the possibly going to involve Vulture and Carnage Spider-Man 4, which probably wouldn't have been that great. Um, which, it's good that they did, because it would have been uh, this, like, double filming, this back-to-back -back thing, which until more recently wasn't a great idea um, and didn't lead to great movies, at least for a long time, so it probably wouldn't have been great. But it eventually led to them restructuring uh, the ideas and people behind the Spider-Man movies, and eventually got, of course, the amazing Spider-Man movies, which, same problems there. The build-up of a universe thanks to the MCU's existence we got two into Sony's head, and they end up making a mess of a second movie, canceling that and allowing, of course, Tom Holland Spider-Man to exist, starting with Civil War. And since the war, we've got this pretty neat Spider-Man that I've talked about before of, yes, he's not necessarily the best Spider-Man, but then again, not, so are none of them, really. Especially with one, with just kind of just being certain scenes could have been rearranged to be a little bit better, and don't even get me started on three. And of course, uh, as cool, fun as Andrew Garfield can be, his first film is just kind of boring, and the second film is fucking miserable. But there's still lots of good parts of the films, and re-watching them all was definitely worthwhile. Sure, not everything is great about these movies, but they are a fun time. Even if sometimes unintentionally. And going through them and really seeing the characters' arcs, and eventually them, of course, leading into this. It was really cool. I did not expect the other two Spider-Men to show up, though. Literally until the movie came out, I was not... I was fully gunning for the fact that they weren't going to show up, and I was almost maybe going to gloat a little bit on um, me being right, but, um, you know, the whole time I was ready to be wrong, and I wanted to be wrong, and I'm very glad I was wrong, because though we did clearly get the villains, um, I wasn't expecting 
the, the villain's actors. I was not expecting the lizard to speak, let alone be voiced by the same actor he was played by in the Amazing Spider-Man 1 movie. And to have my boy the Sandman show up and for all the villains to get a happy ending by the end of this is, um, is amazing. I guess is the right word you could say. Spectacular, also possibly. But let's not get uh, ahead of ourselves, of course. Let's talk about the plot a little bit. Not going into too far into detail, but mainly, of course, it is shortly after being exposed at the end of the previous Spider-Man movie. Spider-Man kind of has to try and live his life um, now with everyone thinking not, not only did he kill Mysterio, but that he's this kind of just out of whack vigilante known as Spider-Man. Um, and things aren't going great, and things... Uh, especially not going great for his friends, who ultimately are also affected by this, due to the fact that they are known as his friends, none of them can really get into college at all. And what makes this worse is you know, it's kind of public enemy number one. Um, whole ass Daredevil <laughs> gets him out? Like, Daredevil, the best lawyer ever, g gets him off from, like, being jailed, which is, um, Daredevil shows up in this. <laughs> People were thinking that too, but I was like, there's no way. There's no way. And the fact that fucking Kingpin, which by the way, uh, you're already in the spoiler section, so I'm spoiling multiple things, but if you haven't seen Hawkeye, Kingpin's in Hawkeye. So the, the Netflix shit is just is canon now, which is amazing. People were doubting me, but I was like, fuck you, it's, it has always been canon. Fuck you. But now this is full confirmation on like the same week, which is awesome. I, I should have, like, finished Hawkeye, like, before watching this instead of, like, the day before, because I would have just been, like, great both times, but instead I watched Eternals before this for some reason. I don't know. Weird. By the way, I didn't do a review for Eternals, because I didn't care, and when I watched it, I, you know, had full reason to. Uh, by the way, yes, it is at the bottom of the ranking, because it's the worst MCU film, but we're not talking about Eternals, we're talking about Spider-Man. Despite that, though, his life still isn't going that great, so he ultimately goes to, of course, Doctor Strange to try and fix things. And Doctor Strange is into it until Spider-Man botches the spell, and Doctor Strange is ultimately just like, get out of here, you're stupid, in botching the spell. He does bring in, of course, the villains, at least a couple of them from the previous movies, and now he has to deal with them, ultimately goes out to try and capture them. But when Doctor Strange goes, yeah, some of them are going to die after you kind of hear certain dialogue uh, between the the uh, few of them that do die in their movies, um, and Peter Park Parker ultimately traps him in the fucking mirror dimension in one of the coolest fucking fights ever <laughs> uh, in the whole series. He just traps Doctor Strange in there temporarily, um, and ultimately Charles goes off to try and fix them. He does fix Doc Ock immediately, which is so great. Watching Spider Man two bef uh, before this. You know, Doc Ock is like adorable big teddy bear man who really cares about science and wanting to like better humanity through it. So to see him like fall and like come back to regular Doc Ock here was so great. Like honestly. But he's the only person who actually wants to go with it as the other villains are or ultimately kind of uh, they are turned against uh, Spider-Man through you know, of course, Norman Osborn and Green Goblin, still Willem Dafoe, doing his absolute best, who turns the whole thing against Spider-Man, who he himself nearly dies, and again, we were in spoilers, so it's uh, too late now, but uh, still, though, turn back if you haven't already watched the movie, but Aunt May dies, and it is so sad. It is so sad. Oh, God, Marissa Tomei's Aunt May will be sadly missed. My God. Uh, but in her last moment, she gives the with great power comes great responsibility speech, because again, there is no Uncle Ben in this universe. Um, but soon enough, uh, his friends try and find him with the little sling ring that uh, Ned got uh, a after uh, Doctor Strange was trapped. And they end up finding the other two Spider-Men, and the crowd that was watching with me fucking went wild. It was great. And you know, I was fucking hyped about it, and I was especially hyped to see the group of them when the three of them got together, it was so great. They just quipped at each other and kept referencing funny things about their movies and each other and their relationships and how differing, but also kind of similar they are. And the best part about it is they built each other up through it. They, like, 
what, they're fucking kings doing king shit, my guy. Like, it's, it's great. Like, it wasn't just like, haha, Andrew Garfield's the worst. Or, like, Tom Holland's stupid. No, they were like, you're cool, you're cool, we're all cool, we're fucking Spider-Man. And it was great. And there's, like, a part where they're waiting for the villains where they just talk for, like, four minutes. And it could have been, like, ten. And I would have totally kept watching. It was fucking great. I loved it. I love how they kept talking about their movies and their adventures and how weird it is that Toby just has webs in his arms. He doesn't know how it works. <laughs> it's, it's so great. I love it. There's a part where Andrew Garfield, like, kind of, like, fixes the crick in uh, uh, Tobey Maguire's back, and I didn't realize I wanted this till right now, but there it is. It was great. Oh, my God. And there's a fucking awesome, epic, climactic scene where they fight the different villains, and they slowly, one by one, cure them, and it was great seeing the lizard be cured again. Um, hopefully this time he won't go to jail. Presumably he doesn't die off screen, as hopefully none of them will die. Especially not Electro, who through this kind of like gets some like... He kind of like goes through therapy through this whole adventure and gets some closure in terms of what it means to be a nobody or or to have friends. And I hope like this means they're going to be buds in their universe. And same goes for Toby, who's going to be totally fucking new friends with Norman. He probably has to explain him about his son. Which, yes... There's, of course, after they cure Sandman, Lizard, and Electro, there is, of course, this big fight between um, uh, Tom Holland, Spider-Man, and, of course, the Green Goblin. He fucking nearly tries to kill him, um, but the two Spider-Men stop him, and Tom Holland is able to come back to the good side and cure the Green Goblin, and he's, like, immediately, like, holy shit, <sighs> I've done a lot of fucked up things. <laughs> It was great to see these characters really get, like, the the clarity of mind and this, like, closure. It's fucking great. And regardless of the quality of the films, these characters are still likable, you know? And it was, it's, there was good parts about their characters and their arcs. And to see these, like, conclude here is just so great. It was so great to see this. As a person who grew up with the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man and uh, just loved Spider-Man in general, this was an absolute great uh, movie to just go through as a Spider-Man film. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not a happy ending, though. It's a very bittersweet ending, as the only way to fix the multiverse slowly dissipating um, is to make everyone forget about Peter Parker, not Spider-Man, or that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, but Peter Parker in general. Because how can you remember Peter Parker being Spider-Man if nobody knows who Peter Parker is? Peter Parker just stops existing for everyone. Obviously, he's still around, right? But everyone forgets about him. And it's so heartbreaking. Because Peter has, has, say, says goodbye to his friends, and he's like, I'll meet you again. I will see you again. We will meet again. And when he tries to see them not know him, after several movies of them building up these friendships, it, it's so... Uh, Less or so MJ. You know, we, we, we were just kind of starting to get with that relationship. Uh, I still am not the biggest fan of Zendaya's uh, Mary Jane, which they've fully confirmed her last name is Watson in this one. Um, we were, I was starting to get to like her in uh, Far From Home, and I do really like their relationship between the two, and I still was sad about that fact, but it was really more sad about the Ned thing, man. I actually started fucking tearing up when he looked at Ned, and Ned just didn't see him. I, I am always scared of the idea of just all, all of my friends abandoning me completely. That is too frightening, and that I just saw myself in that situation, and I just, oh my god, I <laughs> I, I could not for that second. Happy Hogan at the grave of uh, Aunt May with Peter, who he does not know at all, and you're just like... It's like, now Peter's all on his own, and he makes his whole new suit, and he's like a whole new Spider-Man, and you know, and this was a great transformation into the weird MCU Spider-Man that people weren't fully sure about, to him finally becoming the Spider-Man we really want him to be. And to see that was really just the best way to end the movie. New Spider-Man suit, new better homemade Spider-Man suit, um, which I cannot wait to see in the future. Um, I'm very much ready for the next step of Tom Holland's Spider-Man, which there will there'll definitely be. There, this certainly isn't the end for Tom Holland's Spider-Man. We'll hopefully see more Spider-Man feeling things. Other people were wanting this. 
people were really wanting this, and I was not expecting it. I was never expecting this to be a thing, but this was, movie was exactly what I was wanting. Everything besides maybe the Japanese Spider-Man showing up, which we're getting him in the next Spider-Verse, so whatever. Uh, but besides that, uh, this was exactly what I wanted it to be. Pay tribute to the characters, bring their arcs into this, and have them like finish what was left over at the end of their uh, previous movies. Have them like end here, bring closure to the characters, and just bring this great adventurer just around and have a lot of interactions, a lot of fun characters. It was so great. And maybe it's because it's off of the backbone of fucking seven movies. <laughs> seven movies of Spider-Man you need to watch to fully understand why this is great. But you know what? I have. So uh, it's great. And I love it. And Because I love Spider-Man. And this was a fun, great time the whole time. Obviously this isn't fucking perfect. Not like a big art movie. Not like a deep movie. You know, it's fucking superheroes. But if you're going to make a superhero movie, it needs to be grand, full of characters that are likable and enjoyable. A lot of cool shit going on <laughs> that generally has me invested the whole entire time. Yes, it uses a lot of nostalgia, but you know what? That nostalgia hits, and I don't care. Not every movie going forward should be filled with lots of nostalgia. There should definitely be other things that are making people wanting to watch the movie. There should be other ways to build the characters the, to get me as invested and as hyped up as I am right now. Um, I feel like the Guardian movies do a great job doing exactly that. At least it's just my personal opinion. Um, as you know, they're also high on the ranking. But this movie did exactly what I wanted it to do as a cool Spider-Man crossover. And I am very glad that we finally got this movie and that it wasn't disappointing in any capacity I feel like everything about this movie was incredibly enjoyable the acting was really good probably better than the movies that uh, some of these characters come from certainly when it comes to the andrew garfield stuff andrew garfield's a really good actor who wasn't utilized well in his movies but does a much better job here and to see him really have closure for his character was the best part of that especially when it comes to um, of course, Electro, who is also much better here because it's Jamie Foxx, and I expect Jamie Foxx to be fantastic, and he is really good here. Um, and then we don't get too much of them, uh, the Lizard and Sandman. You got Thomas Hayden Church and Rich Ephens, which I believe is how you say his name. Um, they're mainly voice acting the characters, but they do show up um, as their human forms, and it's really great to see those two characters be normal again. Uh, and Tommy McGuire, though again still back as the like rarely ever blinking Peter Parker of his era, is just very cool to see this like older, more seasoned Peter. Um, and it's it's just really great. It's just really great to see all these guys together. Um, the effects are fantastic. They bring in the cool Doctor Strangey universe shit. They make it very fun throughout it. Really bringing in that crazy uh, Jack Kirby type university shit and it gets even nuts when like when Peter like merges the portals together and it gets real crazy and the fact that he's able to like smart his way out of it and basically beating Doctor Strange with his fire powers is really cool and it's actually believable the way he does it like he smarts his way out of it that's so cool the writing is really good this it's certainly nothing deep obviously but it's very enjoyable they play the characters exactly the way they would from their series they clearly pay attention to the previous movies and then just throw them in randomly. Um, and it's especially uh, great because certain times in the Marvel movies there's scenes where you're just like, that shouldn't have been that. They shouldn't have said that during the scene. Um, uh, it's, and there isn't really that here, you know? There's a couple of jokes here and there that are immediately after serious stuff, but it doesn't. it's nothing that really like breaks the pace in such a way where you're like, Ugh, why did you even... Another reason why it's cool going back to the original uh, first Sam Raimi Spider-Man is seeing how CGI has really progressed. <laughs> like, seeing how far effects have gotten. Fuck, again, I watched the 70s Spider-Man, which technically has a movie, so yeah, there you go. And just a, a dude with a rope who's doing this on a wall, seeing that from where we are now, effects really have gone a long way, haven't they? Yeah, there is just so much to enjoy in this movie that if you aren't having a good time and laughing, even if you know it's, you know, again, not the deepest, best movie ever, uh, it's, if you come out of this and you're not smiling, you have a stone heart and I don't know what to tell you. 
It is real damn good, a fantastic time, an amazing or spectacular one, if you will, that uh, I have to recommend to absolutely everyone, Spider-Man fans especially, but just everyone who loves superhero and action movies in general. The Venom movies, alongside the other Spider-Man movies, are technically now a part of the MCU watch order. There you go. Um, uh, which, by the way, they mentioned people who know Peter Parker is Spider-Man are the people that came from those universes. So, there is a Spider-Man in the Venom universe, and Tom Hardy's Venom knows that Peter Parker is Spider-Man in that universe. That is how that works. That's, that's what those were. That's what was happening there. Not entirely sure what the fuck that's supposed to mean, but whatever. More importantly, uh, the end credits afterwards do show is a cool little preview of the next movie, that being um, Doctor Strange and the Madness of the Multiverse. I think that's what it is. Multiverse of Madness, there you go. Uh, I am very hyped for that. I wasn't at first, wasn't sure when I heard a, a couple things about it, but after seeing that trailer, um, motherfucking Shuma Gorth is in it, uh, and I am watching that movie immediately, so next time we get into the MCU, uh, we'll be talking about that crazy movie. That being said, I've been the movie of Atlanta. I hope you enjoyed this review, mainly just some rambling about how much I love Spider-Man in this most recent movie. Just a quickie. Uh, but of course, if you want to see longer, more in-depth reviews, I got those going up every single week, so go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more stuff like that. Of course, did you like Spider-Man? No, uh, uh, Far Away From Home? Uh, no Way Home? Homecoming? Any of the Spider-Man movies in general? Leave that stuff in the comments. I definitely love to talk about it. Most importantly, though, stay good, stay safe, and don't be an asshole.